more lighter passing than other people in the community. But I could go on about the various different ways that black people are oppressed and i will i don't worry i won't, I won't stop but i do want to make sure that i try to retain the focus uh kind of a bit on police brutality and also mass incarceration because as you were kind of advising people to look up uh redlining and kind of that video that you were talking about that netflix put out uh, to try and get themselves educated i also offer that everyone watch or read rather the new dream co oh my god my, my voice jim crow by michelle alexander it's an amazing book, you know, it is factual, you know, it, it pulls data uh, that you can go ahead and compare. And basically what that book talks about is the mass incarceration of blacks in America and how is it effectively the new Jim Crow. And what people don't seem to recognize as well is they're always like, man, like slavery was abolished and ill last minute ago. Why are we talking about like slavery, like slavery isn't a thing, but people need to understand under the guise as well that like, if you are incarcerated, you're basically not a citizen at that point anymore. Like you, you're basically a slave. You're in indentured servitude. They get no, you to you do labor for like five yeah. cents an hour. Like it's the same shit, bro. Like it's not, it's not different. Yeah. No, absolutely. I see. Um, that's a no. I'm uninformed about systemic ways that African Americans are suppressed. Can you enlighten me? I'm trying to learn more. Uh, absolutely. Like I said, I uh, highly recommend 13th. Um, go ahead and watch that. Um, there's a very simple video too about uh, systemic racism. It's like a primer on that um, that I have been sharing with quite a bit of people too. So uh, let me see. I want to definitely share this with the chat as well. I'm actually, I'll probably go ahead and tweet that out again so people can see it. But there's, I think even just going with the 13th so you can at least start to see how these situations have arised and how some of these things originated actually in race from like segregation and they were just moved over. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Some people think like, oh, well, maybe these things were here and this just kind of happened. Or maybe this is like, no, a lot of these things were actually created for this capacity to continue to, to push segregation. And the thing about it is when we went ahead and you had the Civil Rights Act happen that of 1968, a lot of things got shifted over, right? Or things were like, oh, well, you look at initially, like, okay, well, if someone gets, if someone is a criminal and they become a slave by the state, everyone's like, oh, okay, well, I guess that's fine because they're a criminal, right? But what are you doing about um, who dictates who's a criminal and who's not? And what happens when you have a gross proportion of people or are being targeted? Then it can be utilized in that capacity, right? So there's a, there's a lot of information out there. Like I said, uh, start off with the 13th and you can go from there. Uh, I will try to drop this primer. Uh, I'll, at least it's on my Twitter, but I'm going to go ahead and push this out too. But uh, yeah, there's, there's information out there. Um, I also know that on, uh, if you go to like black lives matter as well, they have a, a lot of space, like a lot of places where like, they'll tell you in terms of like books, kind of documentaries, all the kind of things. So there's a, there's a database there of information too. Uh, if you're eager to learn and uh, understand. So I appreciate you asking that question. Um, that, that means a lot. That means that you're at least open to hearing about these things are and like what is in the system that causes this to happen. And that's what's needed, you know, to have any kind of conversation. Some people may not agree. And you know what? <laughs> if that's you, sucks to suck. Cause I like that <laughs> <to> me, <laughs> sucks to suck, but that, that that's you, right? That's what I'm going to believe. But I think that you, if you are really going to be about something and you're going to be so passionate about the other side, you need to at least educate yourself. All right. Um, and that goes for anything in life. Uh, so again, uh, I would recommend the 13th and go from there. Yeah. I even see like in chat, you know, cause every time there is a discussion about race uh, or blacks in particular or incarceration or anything like that, some of the first arguments you find are, Okay, well, you, you 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 always have two guys. You have the guy that's like, oh, like more white people are shot, or more whatever. Or the other option is that they go down the the path of, um, crap. What am I thinking of? I, like I had it for a second. Oh, they always say, how is it possible that people are only complaining about black people when this also happens to white people? But then there's like a seemingly a large gap of understanding of kind of like basic statistics right mm -hmm. like so because there's always you know there's two things with statistics first you always want to like check the sources on it uh because you'll find statistics like 
three out of every five Americans like hate pumpkins or whatever. And it's like, all right, well, you didn't go and ask every single American whether or not they like or dislike pumpkins. You take like uh, a sample size and you kind of project it over to the large population. But even with that aside, like if we live in America and blacks in relations to whites are vastly outnumbered, <laughs> Like, like, it's not even close. There are so many more white people in the United States of America than there are black people in the United States of America. You would think in a, I won't say ideal world, but in a world where things made more sense proportionately, that proportionately, roughly the same amount of any kind of race would be incarcerated as the same amount as any other kind of race. Just speaking, like, hypothetically, right? Because, of course, that's not how things are going to actually happen because of a million reasons that I can't really dive into. But once you look at that statistic for Black people, it's like, damn, huh? That number's kind of absurdly high, isn't it? It's like, it's, it's like very high in comparison. What's that all about? And people don't really seem to get that, that understanding. That, like, the number is so disproportionate to the rest it's like when someone is like okay well we have this problem and it's 99 percent caused by let's just say people who like sweaters and then you have that one dude who's like yeah but i like tank tops and it happens to people who like tank tops too but people with tank tops are one percent of the whole population that's being affected that one percent becomes statistically irrelevant because the problem is easily pointable at the 99%. Yeah, that 1% is a problem, but we got to deal with that very, very large elephant in the room first. And people don't seem mm -hmm. to understand that. Yeah. I mean, you have to look at it as three times per capita. Like, if anytime someone's like, oh, white people die more, it's like, dude, do you not know math? Like, <laughs> like yeah, man. come on, man. <laughs> like, it, it, you know, it's, and again, it, that's what happens when people just really are not looking to learn. Right. When they are so it's so insane, like they're like, I if I'm wrong, it's going to make me uncomfortable. So I will I don't care if people die because I don't want to be wrong. And this is again, it ultimately comes down because black lives matter because it is a human rights issue. We all should be seen equal in that capacity. There's there's human rights that should be had for everyone. And again, that's why you're seeing this. From you're seeing these people, you're seeing that people understand that we need to deal with police brutality. You know, if if a if a white man is dying unjustly and all this issue is happening, heck yeah, I'm fighting for that. We're fighting. We're fighting because this should not happen. It happens grossly, like it happens so much more to black people, and that's why we're talking about that particular. But it's something that we do not want that to happen to anyone, right? So don't don't get caught up in this idea. Oh man, well, you know, you only like you only care about this people and that people, right? It's like, no, dude, like just like a doctor is gonna care about your leg if it's broken and not your hand if it's perfectly fine. Right. Like that's what happens. <laughs> but overall, we care about the entirety of the body. It's that simple. You know? And that's what it comes out to. Like <laughs> people are just like, oh man, oh, I'm just dying like dude. Um, but it, you know what it is. Yeah, five. So let, let, let's talk about this, right? Because I'm sure in, in your lifetime and mine, right? Like not to say that we're old or anything, but I think that's kind of the point. Like we aren't, I'm not going to say we're the youngest spring chickens, but we, we've been around the block for a little bit. Um, and already in our lifetimes, we've had to experience our fair share of whether it's profiling, systematic oppression, or, or what have you, just through the nature of being uh, a black person or a person of color even, and you always, it, it's, this isn't the first time this has happened, right? Like the Black Lives Matter movement has been around for an ill minute, but it's kind of gotten to a point now where it's loud enough that people are kind of making it a point to do their lip service, right? There's some people who are doing what we like to call like performative activism, kind of. They're like, oh yeah, we stand with Black Lives. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally, totally. We're going to donate some money and then never talk about it ever again, just so like people knows that we're like one of the good quote unquote companies. Or similarly, you always hear people say like, oh, you catch a video of like a racist Starbucks employee and then Starbucks will be like, oh yeah, we're going to put uh, ethnic and diversity training in the workplace to ensure that this doesn't happen again. And everyone's just kind of like, yeah, that's a W, we did it. But 
Nobody follows up on what that means. What, what, what does that look like? You know what I mean? Every time I see that, I'm like, okay, so what? You're going to have people sit in a classroom and be like, by the way, racism is bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't. It, there's a, a very clear lack of transparency regarding these things that allows people and especially like larger corporations to kind of make it look like they're doing the right thing without having to be held accountable for any of those kinds of things. And that's why yeah. people now are especially like, for example, all we want is, well, not all we want, but for example, George Floyd, right? How much did it take just to get that cop charged? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, yeah. that seems like such an obvious Oh man, bro, he just kind of shot a dude. He clearly can't breathe. He's saying, yo, bro, I can't breathe. Please take a knee off my neck, bro. Like that, I'm in handcuffs. Like I really ain't going anywhere. And he passes out and dies. And it's like, anyone I'd argue with common sense can look at that and be like, yeah, bro, you you, you probably should have took your, your knee off his neck. Like, I don't feel like that was a crazy request, bro. I think that guy should probably go to jail for that. Like, I feel like that that's a fair amount. Yeah, it was so difficult just to get him charged. Yeah. So then you look at something like that and you're like, wow, okay, this is a scenario where we have clear video evidence. What was reported in the police report is wildly different than what actually happened. And if this is how hard it is with the evidence that we have, just imagine all the times when you don't have that evidence, when the body cam is conveniently turned off when the police report is taken as fact and nobody, the investigation is underway. That's all we get, that's all we get. Oh yeah, we're gonna throw an investigation under this. People are like, yeah, they're investigating it and they never hear about the investigation ever again and they rule it as nothing ever happening. And that's kind yeah. of what we need to, what we're trying to stop. Right, and like I said, this is something that's for all. Like, uh, of course it, it uh, disproportionately, disproportionately affects black people, um, but it's something that we want for everyone, right? And that's the key here, because again, going back into it, it is not just focus. It's because we want at all to be good. This is why we're focused on it, because in terms of how it is pushed on black people, it's wrong, right? But it's a thing where police brutality, you know, having police being held accountable, right? Making sure that people have proper training. Like, why should I be in a circumstance where training for a police officer, where you have the power and you have that kind of authority, and you have a, you can be in a situation in which you can take a life why is that like training less than a, like cosmetology like does that make sense <laughs> to anyone i don't think so I, I, I mean i think that we all can kind of agree on that there's something wrong there uh and there's things that need to be changed in that aspect and i think we can understand if there's someone like i don't know like george floyd's killer if you've like had 12 instances of these types of things Right. And shooting people and being unjust and like going crazy in these kind of situations like, hmm, maybe we should change that, you know, or maybe the fact that currently we have that like 40 percent like of cops like often tend to have uh, deal with like domestic violence and have been like abusers in that aspect. Like and we have numbers that like hmm, maybe we need to figure out how to have a better controlled system for all of us. Right. And that's what it really comes down to. And even so far, if like, and again, people love to talk about this, the good cops, and there are good cops out there. There are. But it's the same thing. Enable them so if these things happen, they can hold people accountable and they can say something. Because if that's not there and it's just this bro code and people just allow these things to happen, then it will continue. And that's not good for anyone. I'm right? happy that you anyone. said that too. Because um, I, I think you bring up kind of an interesting point in a hill that I've seen many uh, online commenters kind of die on, right? Because there's a, you know, cops and police brutality in general is like kind of like a, a hot topic, right? Like, oh, cops, you know, there's good cops, not all cops, yada, yada, yada. You know, you got the not all cops, just like you got the all lives matter people, right? And I, I, I think what people don't understand is kind of like, Cops in general, uh, you know, whatever, they're supposed to serve the people, yada, yada, yada. Um, the system is inherently flawed. Y you know, it's like we say often uh, that we want reform for the entire system, uh, mainly because let's say that I am, I don't know, a good cop. I, I personally, I, I don't believe in that. I don't really... If you're a cop, you're supporting a, a racist system. That, that's the way I think about it. Even if your intentions are pure or feel like the kind of person who's like, 
oh, I'm going to try to change things from the inside. You would clearly realize that you you are far too outnumbered to make a significant enough change without some sort of revolution. But that aside, it's like the kind of the idea that if you are someone who is part of a system, you are by being a part of that system, reinforcing the system, regardless of whether or not you believe of the beliefs of the system. And that's yeah. where people kind of kind of get the phrases that they throw around regarding cops. Even if there's like, oh, like my grandfather's cop, or I know it's this cop, he used to be like my homie, and we used to like be kids outside on the playground or jumping around broken fire hydrants while you know the water's getting sprayed everywhere and they would watch us and let us play and stuff like that like i don't deny that people have had their their positive experiences with law enforcement because i'm sure people have you know i'm sure it's not entirely negative all the time or else there would be a lot more uproar than there is now but particularly within the black community for the amount of good quotation marks experience that i'll put around that the amount of bad ones, the amount of bad ones that I've had. Here's a story for y'all. So I live in Boston, Massachusetts, right? I live, uh, now I live in Jamaica Plain, but I used to live in Mattapan with my parents at their house. And Mattapan was uh, predominantly a Jewish neighborhood uh, back in kind of like the early 1900s uh, before black people started moving in. And then the vast majority of the Jewish people moved away kind of like towards like Milton and shit. Mm -hmm. um, so now Mattapan is a predominantly black community and there are still like little remnants of Jewish people that like stayed around. They're like, oh, wait, actually black people are fine. Like, why did everyone leave? And in my own community, I remember I looked out the window, right? Because I heard shots being fired, which isn't, it's not super uncommon in Mattapan to hear shots being fired, but mm -hmm. I look out the window, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What's going on now here? And I see a, a white person chasing a black person with his gun out, right? And I'm already like, this is kind of sus, right? I live in Mattapan, this is the black neighborhood. You know, we got like some Hispanics and Latinos some Dominicans some stuff like that. But to see a white person in Mattapan is kind of like, a that's a flag. Cause you're like, what are you doing here? But I didn't really think too much of it. All I saw was this white dude chasing this black guy with a gun. And he was yelling, I'm going to fucking kill you. And I was like, well, if he's yelling, I'm going to fucking kill you. Uh, that's probably not a cop. So this is the one time in my life where I actually called the cops. I said, hey, yo, 911. Yeah, I, I got this dude outside my window. He's chasing a black guy with his gun out. And he's running down the street. I don't know what the deal is. I'm not trying to see somebody get shot. Can you like? Do whatever the hell your job is and make sure nobody dies whatever cool hang up the phone now roughly 20 25 minutes later i get a i get a ringing at my doorbell and i'm like okay let me go ahead and see what's up of course it's police enforcement they're like hey yeah are you the person that uh that called in the report about uh seeing someone being chased by a gun and I was like, yeah, 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 that was me. I, I saw some dude getting chased by a gun. And I was like, it's kind of weird. We're at Pam, bro. But yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, I, I saw what I saw. And he's like, yeah, are you sure it, it wasn't one of our officers trying to apprehend a, a black guy uh, do some shootings back on uh, on Morton Street? And I was like, nah, bro, I don't, I, I don't think so. Like, I, I, I couldn't see clearly he had like a jacket on. Like, I guess he could have been a cop, but I don't I don't think it was a cop because, I mean, this guy was running with his, like, gun out, like, at the back of this dude's head saying, I'm going to fucking kill you. So I'm like, I, I know cops aren't trained to say that. So there's, no, there's no way in hell he's a cop. Cop wouldn't be saying that. And he's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, the, it, it was definitely uh, one of our officers. Uh, you have, like, the description. I was like, yeah, he was, like, this kind of, like, middle-aged white dude had, like, a fuckboy quaff going on. Like, he looked like, you know, like, standard, I don't know, whatever. He looked like it was, like, Roger from, from Doug or some shit. And he's like, okay, yeah, that was definitely our guy. You probably misheard him because he was saying, yeah, please stop running or I'm going to be forced to shoot. He definitely didn't say that. And I'm like, I'm not about to sit here with this white cop and explain to him how I very clearly heard what I heard. Like, there's no way to, like, mince words for it to sound like what you just told me. But I'm just like, oh, like, okay, like, have a nice day, bro. I'll, I'll catch you later. Ha, 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 ha. Please get, like, the fuck off my lawn because I don't want to see you anymore. Because from that, from that point forward, I never caught the cops again.
Why would I call the cops again? You're going to tell me I have this cop yelling down the street. I'm going to fucking kill this guy. And then come to my house and tell me that's not what he said and look me dead in the eye and tell me that's not what he said. So I said, all right, bet. Yeah. And I never felt more fearful in my life than I did with that cop on my step in comparison to when I had an actual gun pointed at my head in the ghettos of Ruggles. And that's crazy to me. How can I feel like my life is more at risk in front of the people that are supposed to protect me when when I have actual gangbangers in front of me, I'm not scared that I'm going to die in that scenario. And that is the issue with our system. No, 100%, man. 100%. And like those things just definitely need to change. And so it's, again, I, I, I really appreciate people out here. I uh, hope everyone saw that link and stuff as well that uh, she just I put out. You know, definitely a good primer on systemic racism. But yeah, man, like you can go through all these communities, all these people that you love and you watch and you do commentary and all these things like that. And like, I'll tell you, guarantee you, all of us have stories, man. It's not a, it's not like this crazy thing. It's not like it's an exception. It's not like, oh, well, this guy, you know, well, he was doing this or he was doing that. Like, no, there is a issue here, right? And it goes against these values that we claim that we're standing for, um, but our actions are not following these things. So we, we got to look at it clearly and do what is needed, man. So, again, thank you, everyone, being here. Shout out to people who have been already donating for the cause and supporting. Like we said before, it's not even just uh, donating. We appreciate people uh, just sharing it as well. This is uh, incredible, and I'm happy to hear you guys come here and hear and support, man. Mr. Shasta, my boy, my boy. Thank you, man. You, I always love you, man. Always, always a real one. And I, I just love that we have a lot of people out here just speaking truth and talking about what's good, man. This, this is what matters. This is what we're here for. This is what we're fighting against. And we're doing this because it's injustice, right? And we need to move forward that as one. We need to be unified as one for these kind of circumstances. This is how we build a better world for all of us. So, I mean, it's like MLK said, man, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. That's why this is important. That's why this matters. Because if this is happening to us, it can happen to anyone. And we need to build a system in which that shouldn't be happening to anyone. That's why this is important. And that's why protesting is important, too. You know, like, yep. I don't, uh, a lot of people don't. Because it seems kind of weird on paper, right? Like, oh, I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to just kind of scream how I feel. That, that's basically what a, what a protest is at the base level. You know what I mean? It's like you going out and you telling it like it is and you just keep on doing that until somebody fixes what the issue is. That, that's what you're trying to do because you recognize that the problem is bigger than yourself. There's nothing mm -hmm. that you alone can do to solve the issue is above you but you need the change to happen in order to promote a better uh, society and community uh, for yourselves and your brothers and loved ones and i feel like you know for some people i you know protesting is not their thing right i feel like kind of every commentator that's been on whether it's been on this stream or the other stream has kind of like put that out there is you know for some people protesting is not 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 their scene and that is perfectly fine right yeah. in the same way that like you have some soldiers that go on the front lines you still have people that sit in the back that provide uh you know medical assistance or, or what have you uh to kind of to the cause it's not like this is the only thing you can do if you can't go out and protest you know one of the ways you can help the cause you know is through stuff like this right you know we have this uh this stream going on you know it's a smash tournament that's whatever but really uh the smash tournament is kind of like the pizza that you have for like a club meeting, you're like, hey, we got free pizza at the club meeting. Okay, everybody shows up to the club meeting, even though they don't give, you know, really much. You know, it's like, hey, you're here, and this is what we're actually here for. Yeah. But you know, you can donate to to the bail products. There's a George Floyd Memorial Fund. There's, you know, all kinds of things. Let's say you don't got money, right? Let's say you don't got money, and let's say you don't feel comfortable going outside uh, to, to to protest on the streets of wherever you are locally, right? I mean, even. From me observing my, my Twitter feed over the past, let's say, week or two, right? Everything was very loud the first few couple of days, right? Everything, you you start scrolling down the feed and you'd be like, oh, damn, like, 
okay, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, like, yes, 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 this is that energy I need to see. Yes, we cannot allow them to get away with this injustice. And then, of course, kind of the more that it goes on, the more people start to, like, drop off a bit because people have this feeling uh, where they need to have, like, a return to normalcy. And while that is a feeling that I'm able to, to empathize with and understand uh, to some degree, the understanding also needs to be that, like, if you have the ability to be like, oh, I want things to go back to normal. I'm gonna just like stop retweeting all this stuff. Like I, I, I did my 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 five retweets, my my three tweets about Black Lives Mattering, and I'm gonna go back to the regularly scheduled program. Like there needs to be an understanding there where like one, that's not enough. Especially if you're not a person of color, explicitly if you're white and that's all you did, that, that's not enough. <laughs> it, it's not enough. Yeah. And I'm gonna be the first one to tell you that's not enough because it's not something that you can like like throw money at or, or throw a couple of tweets at and just think it's going to disappear because for people like you and me it, this is every day it, it can't stop I and mean, we don't have oh that that luxury that that is the embodiment of privilege to be yep. able to look at something and recognize oh i don't want to deal with it anymore so i'm just not going to meanwhile there are people that have to deal with that very thing and do not have a choice yeah. and that's kind of one of those things where if you can't protest you can't donate money the very least you can do is be you know flippant be livid you know let people know how you feel let them know that you are about this movement let them know that you stand in solidarity with your black brothers and sisters and also you need to let them know as well that like yeah we're hurting. The black community is in a state of nonstop grieving all the time. <laughs> you know, what I mean, like there's never mm -hmm. a day where we're like, oh, you go down the block and you got another memorial for for little Timmy who got shot uh, the other day like that, that. That is the day to day. And you need to make sure that if you are someone who has that luxury, you have that privilege, that you use that privilege in a way to benefit people who do not. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, man. I mean, even for myself. I mean, obviously, like I said, uh, there's many ways you can support the movement. It's not just money, of course. Um, but even for myself, I'm like, you know what? Like, grand, two grand, that's okay, man. Because, you know what? I wouldn't be in this opportunity if I wasn't, you know, on the shoulders of giants, you know, on the shoulders of Martin Luther King, you know, Marcus Garvey, you know, fighting for my rights, supporting me, right? You know, I wouldn't be in this opportunity if it wasn't for my allies, right? So if that's that's what matters here you know and so do what you can but do it in earnest and understand and make sure that your intentions mirror your actions you know if you say one thing you do another you need to take a hard look at yourself you know so i just want to say yeah i know i've said it this 20 million times but thank you so much everyone who's here right now you be just tuning into the stream we appreciate you you know we're having these discussions and uh we're going to continue having these discussions to this top eight um, you guys will get some commentary and stuff too, you know, but, uh, I, I think that I would love to, I know we're getting some good dialogue too, uh, in the chat as well. And, uh, mm -hmm. the mods are coming in hot on some people. So I I'd love to hear from people as well, too, as we kind of go in and, uh, give you guys a little bit of comment. You guys, cause you guys are going to get a little bit of commentary. Not everything's going to be commentary, but you're going to get a little <laughs> bit of commentary. All right. So, um, we'll, we'll get into it here. I mean, right now we're looking at a, a game five. Now we're speaking Nico and JP and, I don't know if you saw that that game four, but that game four was actually wild. Like they went down to the wire. They were like both at like 150 percent, and like this like J JP couldn't like clutch it out. He got a lot ton of down throws, but it just was not happening, man. Oh my god, what? <laughs> he just backslash. <laughs> Sometimes you just Dang. do it, baby. Nike, Nike, man. <laughs> <The> perfect <laughs> punish. <laughs> that was so clean. And that's that what I like was, to see. Yeah, man. That move was actually made the...